The new husband, hearing the commotion, approached the door to stand beside his wife, confusion evident on his face. As she explained the bizarre encounter, he scrutinized the woman, trying to recall if he had ever seen her before. The woman seemed desperate, almost ready to break down the door. However, it wasn't until she mentioned his name that a spark of recognition flickered in his eyes. Was she here to harm him? Sarah and Harry decided to spend a quiet evening at their home in Bush Grove, California, preferring the comfort of their living room over the noise of a crowded restaurant. As they browsed the delivery app, their appetites grew in anticipation of a delicious meal. After careful consideration, they chose their favorite Thai restaurant and eagerly placed their order, unaware of the surprise that awaited them. Time seemed to drag on as they anxiously awaited their food. At last, the familiar buzz of the doorbell echoed through their home, signaling that dinner had arrived. Sarah, who had just turned 30, quickly moved to the door and glanced through the peephole before unlocking it. Speaking clearly through the ring camera, she said with a polite smile, just leave it at the door, thank you. We'll be out to grab it soon, assuming it was a routine delivery. Unbeknownst to her, this delivery driver was anything but ordinary. It was a unique and unexpected visit. The woman on the camera hesitated, eyes flickering with nervousness as she pleaded, I really need to use the bathroom. Just for a moment, please. Sarah's heart raced at the unusual request. Her instincts urged her to be wary, but she maintained her composure and shook her head politely. I'm sorry, but no, please just leave the food and we'll be out shortly. Sarah's heart raced as she observed the woman's face through the camera. Though her voice was polite, there was an undercurrent of urgency that sent chills down Sarah's spine. Just leave it at the door, thank you. We'll be out to grab it soon, Sarah repeated, trying to conceal her unease. However, the woman insisted, her eyes shifting nervously. I really need to use your bathroom, she pleaded. It was an unusual request from a food delivery person at 9 p.m. Sarah hesitated, her thoughts in turmoil. This wasn't typical behavior for a delivery driver. I'm sorry, but we can't let you in, she said, her voice quivering. The delivery woman's attitude turned sharp. Do you want me to make a mess right here, she snapped. Her persistence grew. Call your husband, she insisted. He'll let me in, Sarah was baffled by how this woman knew her husband. The woman's demeanor changed, her tone growing more urgent. Call your husband, he'll let me in, she insisted with a sharp edge in her voice. Sarah observed the woman through the video feed. She was short, with disheveled hair, and didn't seem like her husband's type. What could her connection to him be? Was this a ploy to gain access to her home? Had she been there before? Harry, 34, had been lounging on the couch when he approached the door, his brows knitted in confusion. What's going on, Sarah, he asked, concern lacing his voice. Sarah glanced at the door, her heart sinking. What if the woman was telling the truth? What if Harry did know her? She didn't trust her husband at that moment and felt trapped in a love triangle. Harry's voice cut through the tension, still confused. Who is it, he asked. Sarah took a deep breath, trying to calm her nerves. A delivery driver is here, she said, eyeing the woman outside cautiously. She claims to know you, her husband, looking irritated, glanced out the window. Is that our food, he asked. Sarah nodded quietly, her expression serious. He kept watching the woman for a moment longer. Harry's eventual response was tense. I've never seen her before in my life, he said, but Sarah's suspicions about him were already growing. Sarah glanced at Harry, her expression uncertain. This woman wants to use the bathroom. I don't know, Harry, something feels off, she whispered. The woman outside clutched their packet of food hopping from foot to foot in apparent desperation. Harry's eyes darted between Sarah and the screen, his mind racing. I don't think that's a good idea. Maybe we should just, he started, but the woman cut him off, her voice urgent. Please, I just need a minute. It's an emergency. Harry didn't want to confront her because he didn't want to offend her and thought that it may be women's issues. He urged Sarah to chase her away just tell her that you're going to complain to her boss if she doesn't leave the food and go, he suggested. Sarah agreed and tried to talk some sense into the erratic delivery woman, but she was purposefully annoying and refused to leave their food order down on the porch. 
A tense silence settled over the room as Sarah and Harry exchanged a hesitant glance. Their order had come to $86. They watched the girl juggle their supper like it was a toy. They lost their appetite thinking about their pad thai getting thrown around in the mix. Something about the situation didn't sit right with either of them, but they couldn't quite put their finger on it. They had no idea what the delinquent delivery woman was going to do next. It was almost 21.30 p.m. and the delivery woman was still standing on their porch. Harry was getting angry and wanted to go outside and push her off. But Sarah stopped him. Don't get physical. We don't know what she could do to us, she begged him. At this point, the delivery woman was knocking on the door. Finally, Harry spoke up, his voice firm but compassionate. I'm sorry, but we can't let you in. Please understand, would she just do her job and go? Harry started getting excited. He wanted to have his dinner and was annoyed that this was happening. Sarah noticed the anger on his face. It was a battle between his stomach and helping a stranger, but he didn't feel comfortable letting a service delivery person use his personal bathroom. Sarah's stomach churned with fear. If Harry didn't know her, then who was she? And why was she so desperate to get inside? The delivery woman kept banging on the door. Come on, I've got your package. Don't you want it? She tried to persuade Sarah, I'm sorry, but we can't let you and Sarah repeated, her voice wavering. Please, just leave the food and go. But the woman shook her head, her desperation growing by the second. I can't, she insisted. I need to use your bathroom. I can't wait any longer. They had no idea how bad the situation was going to get. Sarah was afraid that there was something happening between the woman and her husband, but everything was happening so fast. Harry's voice crackled his tone urgent. Sarah, don't let her in. Something's not right. He peered through the window again. Sarah felt a surge of panic grip her chest. What if the woman was dangerous? What if they were in danger? At that moment, she didn't know who to trust and she knew something bad was about to happen. Sarah peered through the peephole, her heart pounding with a mix of confusion and unease. The woman didn't want to go. Outside stood the woman, her face strained and her eyes darting nervously. Please, I really need to use your bathroom, the woman pleaded, her voice trembling. Sarah pressed the voice intercom. You're a stranger. I don't know you at all. Why would I let you into my private space? The delivery woman's answer was shocking. The strange delivery woman scowled at the camera. Because I have your food, which is getting colder the longer you let me wait, she barked at them. Sarah hesitated, exchanging a bewildered glance with Harry, who had joined her by the door. He couldn't get through to the restaurant. I'm sorry, but we can't let you in, Sarah replied firmly, her hand gripping the doorknob tighter. But she didn't realize what a big mistake she was making. Harry started getting aggressive with her. He threatened to call her boss if she didn't follow the rules. I think he'll fire you on the spot, he said. But the woman was adamant, I don't care, and I don't think my boss will either, she shouted back. The woman's desperation seemed to escalate. Please, I can't wait much longer. Just a few minutes, I promise, she begged, her words urgent. Was Harry going to budge? Sarah was starting to get annoyed. What if the neighbors are watching Harry? Let's just let her in. Come on, she suggested. The angry husband couldn't believe how naive his wife was being. Just moments ago, she was scared, and now she wanted to invite that stranger into their home. Harry's brow furrowed in concern as he took Sarah's hand. We don't know you. It's not safe, he called out, his voice firm but laced with apprehension. Was she ever going to leave? The woman's eyes widened, and a tremor of frustration passed over her face. But I'm just a delivery driver. You spoke to me through the camera. Please, I'll leave as soon as I'm done, she insisted, her voice tinged with desperation. She came up with every excuse in the book to get herself into the house, but Harry was adamant against it. At this point, Sarah cursed the online delivery system and wished that she had rather cooked dinner at home. The standard of service delivery was increasingly dropping, the delivery woman stared at the camera. This package is getting heavy. I can't stand here forever, she complained. Sarah's mind raced, the situation feeling increasingly surreal. We appreciate the delivery, but we can't let you in. We'll grab the food now, thank you, she said, her tone faltering slightly. But no matter how nice or persuasive Sarah was, she wouldn't leave the parcel down. 
It was as though she was playing a game with them, testing their patience and their kindness. The woman's gaze flickered between them, her expression a mix of pleading and frustration. She held the back of her jeans. Sarah could see her food leaking from the containers inside the packet. Please, you don't understand. I can't leave until. She trailed off, her words punctuated by a sudden wince. She pointed to her behind. If you don't let me in now, there is going to be another huge package on your doorstep, she said nervously. Was she threatening them? Harry exchanged a worried glance with Sarah before speaking, his voice tinged with concern. I think she needs help, he said. He made a crazy sign next to his head. Do you think she's mentally unstable? Maybe she needs proper medical assistance, he said. Harry directed his question to the strange deliver woman. Are you okay? Do you need medical help, he asked, his hand hovering over his phone. He was making a mistake by getting too friendly with her. The woman shook her head frantically, a sheen of sweat glistening on her forehead. No, no, I just need her words dissolved into a pained gasp, and she doubled over slightly, clutching her stomach. Harry was scared that she was going to pass out on the front porch. His eyes widened in fear as he watched the strange woman. Just then the strangest thing happened. The delivery woman couldn't control herself and passed gas. But it was so loud and foul that the couple could smell it through the door. The poor couple didn't know whether to laugh or cry. This was hands down the worst delivery experience they ever had. The girl let the packet drop slightly. You don't understand. I can't move. It is going to come out, she pleaded with them. Sarah's heart clenched with empathy, but fear still gripped her tightly. I'm sorry, but we can't take that risk. Please understand, she said, her voice tinged with regret. But the delivery woman wasn't going to take no for an answer. The woman's straightened desperation etched into every line of her face. I can't leave without using your bathroom. Please. I'm begging you, she pleaded, her voice cracking with strain. Harry waved his cell phone in the air. I'm on the phone with your manager, and he says he wants you back at the shop now he lied. He still couldn't reach the restaurant. The delivery woman called him out. I know you're lying. My boss never answers his cell phone, she laughed suddenly and let out another bubble of gas. It would have been comical if it wasn't so utterly scarring. The tension simmered in the air like a kettle about to whistle as Sarah and Harry stood at their front door, facing an unexpected dilemma. The woman on the other side of the ring camera had thrown a curveball into their evening routine with her insistence on entering their home. Sarah's voice, steady but firm, conveyed their refusal, but the woman persisted, her urgency adamant even through the intercom. Why couldn't she use the bathroom somewhere else? Harry had given up and sat down to rethink his strategy. Sarah kept trying to convince the delivery woman just to do her job and go. Just leave it at the door. Thank you. We'll be out to grab it soon, Sarah repeated, her patience thinning with each passing moment. Yet, the woman's request for access to their bathroom hung in the air like a dense fog, refusing to dissipate. She spoke as though she was entitled to use it, Harry was annoyed. He had missed his dinner time, and this whole ordeal was becoming out of control. He peered closer at the woman's face on the screen, his heart pounding a little louder with each passing second. Who was she? And then it hit him like a ton of bricks crashing down upon him. He remembered her, vividly now, from a chance encounter at their favorite restaurant weeks ago. He wondered if Sarah would remember her too. Harry recalled meeting the strange woman a few months ago at the food court in the mall. His stomach churned uneasily as he realized the gravity of the situation. This wasn't just any delivery driver, this was the same woman who had been following them, leaving cryptic notes and lingering glances that sent shivers down their spines. She was more than a mere stranger, she was a stalker, a presence that had infiltrated their lives with unsettling ease. But how did she manage to infiltrate their food order? A cold sweat broke out on Harry's forehead as the pieces of the puzzle fell into place. He turned to Sarah, his voice low and urgent. I remember her, Sarah. She's the one from the restaurant, the one who. His words trailed off, choked by the weight of their shared fear. The worried husband reiterated their encounter at the food court in the mall a few months prior. Do you remember? 
We complained to the manager that she missed up our order at the steakhouse. Sarah's eyes widened in alarm, mirroring his growing sense of dread. Finally, she remembered an old altercation at the mall where a waitress was reprimanded for mixing up their order. They exchanged a silent, knowing glance, their unspoken fears echoing between them like a haunting refrain. Could it be her? At that moment, they realized the gravity of their predicament. They were trapped, caught in the web of a stranger's obsession with no easy escape in sight. This was about revenge. The woman's insistence grew more desperate with each passing second, her pleas bordering on frantic as she pressed for entry into their home. But Sarah and Harry stood their ground, their resolve strengthened by the chilling realization of who stood on the other side of the door. We can't let her in, Harry Sarah whispered, her voice trembling with fear. We have to call the police. Now, but they had already wasted too much time. As Sarah stood by the door, her voice firm but polite, Harry's mind raced with confusion and unease. He didn't even want the food anymore, he just wanted her to leave. He couldn't afford to get into any legal battles with her. It wasn't worth it. He peered through the peephole, seeing the woman's anxious eyes darting around, her hand gripping the handle of the food bag tightly. She was there for more than just food. Sarah tried to talk some sense into the girl. Why don't you go use a public bathroom? But she said she couldn't hold it and drive. The couple didn't believe her. Sarah, something's not right, Harry whispered urgently, his heart pounding against his chest like a trapped bird. I know, Harry. This is bizarre, Sarah replied, her voice tinged with apprehension. Was there any way that they could get her to leave their property? The woman's demands grew more insistent, her tone bordering on desperation. Dude, I'm going to do it right here, if you don't open the door now, he threatened. Harry's mind flashed back to a fleeting moment in the crowded restaurant, a figure lurking in the shadows, watching them with an intensity that sent shivers down his spine. Harry, are you going to tell her Sarah asked, her voice trembling with uncertainty. What was her husband's plan of action? Harry's throat felt dry as he struggled to form words. I dot 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 dot, I think I've seen her before, at the restaurant. She was dot dot dot, she was staring at us, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. Sarah told him to try and get a hold of the food court, but it was after hours, so they were closed. He was running out of options. Sarah's eyes widened in alarm, her grip on the door tightening. What does she want, Harry? Why won't she just leave? But she didn't know that the worst was about to happen. The tension in the air was rife as the standoff continued. The woman's refusal to leave the package down sent shivers down Sarah's spine. Harry, recognizing her from the restaurant, realized they were dealing with more than just a persistent delivery driver. She was a stalker, unhinged and unpredictable. The woman's voice pierced through the silence, her tone growing increasingly frantic. Please, I just need to use the bathroom. I can't dot dot dot, I can't hold it anymore. Harry's mind raced as he tried to make sense of the situation. The pieces of the puzzle began to click into place, forming a chilling picture of obsession and danger. S. Sarah, she's dot dot dot, she's the girl from the restaurant. The one who kept staring at us, she was fired because of us. Harry whispered, his voice trembling with realization. Sarah's eyes widened in horror as the pieces fell into place. Oh my God, Harry, she's dot dot dot, she's a disgruntled employee, the couple realized that they were in danger. The woman's pleas grew more desperate, her voice bordering on hysteria. Harry's heart pounded in his ears as he struggled to think of a solution, his mind clouded with fear and uncertainty. Harry, what do we do? Sarah asked, her voice shaking with fear. Her hand was ready to dial 911. With a sinking feeling, Harry's eyes widened in recognition as he scrutinized the woman's face. I remember her from the restaurant, but she changed her hair color. She's back with a vengeance. Panic surged through Sarah as she realized the gravity of the situation. Before they could react, the woman's actions turned erratic. Fear flickered in Sarah's eyes as Harry dialed the company, desperation creeping into his voice. But before any resolution could be reached, the situation took a disturbing turn. With a look of defiance, the woman hurled the food onto the pavement, a grim testament to her unraveling state of mind. She wanted Harry to come outside. 
In a fit of desperation, she threw the food onto the pavement, the sound of shattering containers echoing through the night. To their horror, she proceeded to relieve herself in their garden, heedless of their protests, right there in the middle of the petunias. Disbelief washed over the couple as the woman brazenly relieved herself in their garden. The sanctity of their home had been violated, leaving them reeling in shock and disbelief. What was she going to do next? The rude woman shook herself off and marched back to her car without looking back. Sarah and Harry were left to pick up the pieces. Frantic, Harry dialed the delivery company, his voice urgent as he recounted the surreal ordeal unfolding on their doorstep. But by the time help arrived, the woman had vanished into the night, leaving behind a trail of chaos and disbelief. They were so embarrassed that they decided to move house immediately. Sarah and Harry stood in stunned silence, the events of the evening leaving them shaken to the core. As they set about cleaning their front porch, they couldn't shake the lingering sense of vulnerability that clung to them like a shadow. For weeks to come, they couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, haunted by the memory of the unsettling encounter that had shattered their sense of security. And as they learned that the woman never returned to her job, they couldn't help but wonder what other horrors lay hidden beneath the veneer of everyday life.